Hello, this is Nuji here today, and today I will be showing you my Byzantium to Roman Empire game in Europa, Universalis 4. Um, it was from November 11th, 1444 to January 3rd, uh, 1821. This was on Iron Man, but I did not have the Marinote Storm DLC activated when I played, so the achievements are disabled right now. At now. I had 55 or 355 uh, regiments, 289 ships. I had the second largest army, largest navy, most provinces, highest province value, highest income, highest trade income. I got a score of uh, 18,511. I had this guy ruled my uh, empire for 58 years, 100 wars three defeats, which are mainly just me paying off people so I could get out of wars. I annexed 30 nations, I think it was more than that, but uh, 556 provinces. I don't know where this 87 comes from. I had 196 military leaders, which are mainly just I had extra military points and I wanted some army professionalism. I had a 6622 as my best leader, and I had 65 de development in Constantinople. Okay, here's the time lapse. So, start here, and after a very quick, very early war with the Ottomans, I managed to take back all of my Greek cores with just the allies of Karaman, Crimea, which helped blockade the strait, which prevented most of their armies from regrouping and stuff, Walchia, Trebizond, and that's it. So, let's start. So at this point, about 40 years into the game, I had managed to retake all the Greece. I had Albania as a vassal. I had taken Kosovo. I had most of uh, north uh, west uh, Anatolia. I also had Wattenberg as a vassal for some reason, because I think they were allied to Serbia, and I just decided to vassalate them which helped me gain a small power base in the Holy Roman Empire which I kind of use as a staging ground for other invasions.
So at this time, my alliances were Spain and Russia. And after taking the island of Corsica, both Revolution or France and England declared me their rivals. Which was fun. France remained my rival the entire game until I eventually outclassed them and they were left with some tiny amounts of Holy Roman Empire land. So at this point, I started to eat up Karaman, who had greatly expanded at this point. I also managed to take these two parts of northern France of Brittany and Calais, uh, which I, they had both had forts, naval forts, and they remained in my possession and were a great use as a distraction when fighting. And, and they remained in my possession the entire game. They were a great help. At this time, I had restored the uh, patriarchy, uh, therefore dissolving the papacy, basically ruining all of the Catholics, which are pretty much all of Europe, because the, uh, the Reformation started over here in the Livonian Order, and basically only converted Poland and Lithuania. So at this point, I still had much more territory to conquer, and I did not believe I was going to be able to do it. At this point, my only goals was to basically restore the, um, uh, the borders of the Byzantine Empire under Justinian the Just, but with a lot of truth breaks with Spain and France, I was able to eventually conquer them all. So about this time, I, Russia's Queen Anna, or Tarzetta, Anna died at the age of 71 uh, without an heir, putting a Pelagius on the throne, 
which I immediately dissolved my alliance with Russia, claimed their throne, and went to war against both Russia and Spain. This allowed me to grab the Spanish province, uh, these three Spanish provinces right here, and forced the entirety of Russia into a personal union, which they stayed loyal to, and eventually helped me conquer most of Western Europe. I'm going to slow down the time lapse now, because this is when provinces start getting greatly annexed. So at this point, I had taken quite a few forts off of Fran uh, the level 8 forts off France, so it would be much easier to siege them down. also did the same slightly to Spain, taking Valencia and Toledo. I also, at this time, had Byzantine Persia, which was very plagued with rebels, so I tried to annex them as quickly as possible. So I could continue on my fight without having to constantly deal with rebels. Also, these two Mamluckian provinces, who will stay here pretty much till the end of the game, till I eventually annex them. So at this point, I was truce breaking a lot in France. I still had Austria and Great Britain as an ally at this point, despite me controlling uh, Vienna. But that was because the Poles took it, and I was able to take it from the Poles and keep the Austrians as an ally. I kept the Austrians for my longest lasting out of my European alliances. And I'd created the client states of Gaul and the West French Alliance. So what just happened there was I had Spain was I needed to conquer all of their Spanish territories that still remained in Europe but I also needed to take these two uh, British territories but the British were allied to my, uh, my ally Austria who I still wanted as my ally so what I did was I declared a war on Spain who is, and called the, uh, or the Austrians in then, while fighting this war, and it was a huge war in Africa, because most of the Spanish war score came from down here, I blitzkrieged into, uh, in into Britain by just sending over huge amounts of troops and just smashing through their forts to grab these two provinces as quickly as I could. Then, by declaring a imperialist war on Pomerania, as Austria was the Holy Roman Empire Emperor, I was able to seize all of the remaining Balkan and Italian territories I needed in order to form the Holy Roman e or the Roman Empire. All that remained was the annexation of the West Front's alliance, which happened in 1807.
1805, I guess. I don't actually remember. But with the annexation of the uh, West France Alliance, the Byzantine Empire declared itself the new Roman Empire. And with cleaning up of borders, I was able to own all of the Mediterranean and all of the Black Sea was under not my direct control, but at me or my subjects. And at the end of the game, on January 3rd, 1821, you could walk from the tip of Tibet all the way to uh, Paris without ever once having to leave my empire. With the Imperator Alexos, the, four, or the sixth of Pelagos was the one who ended this empire. A thousand and eighty-eight development I had culture converted to Roman. Mostly was this territory became Greek and then formed Roman. All the way down here to Turkish, which I completely converted, but still kept. I was in enlightened despotism. I had Russia as a personal union. I was allied to Ethiopia, Songhai, and Ming, which basically just so that the coalition would band. I had uh, Lakidath as a march, uh, Hamadrat as a vassal and Russia as a personal union. I was making 500 ducats a turn with a huge amount. Most of that was coming from trade, which I controlled a large amount of. I had maxed out all technologies, got all these idea groups, used these policies, had pretty low stability just due to leaders dying at the end and not just wanting to send admin power on that. 100% patriarch authority. A lot of generals over my force limit navy. I would have higher army professionalism but I used a lot of it just to gain manpower at the end of the game. And, yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please remember to leave a like and subscribe, and see you next time.